Welcome everyone, this is Zanta with Repo Products. Today's video is an extension slash revision on the previous video I did for Spanish tile roofs in Revit. Um, the previous video was just about showing the concept and understanding you know, how to apply it and make it work. So here I have in Revit 2020 uh, the roof created with the Spanish tiles. And just for a quick review, um, if you select the roof, you'll see that this particular roof, I've created multiple roofs. I've created a beam system that acts as the underside structure. I've created a very, very thin roof that's made up of a couple layers of plywood. And then I have an actual curtain wall system. Um, and if we select it, it's actually a sloped glazing roof. If we go into the properties, the type properties of the sloped glazing roof, we can see that there's a custom curtain panel called barrel tile one that's being used with a certain amount of spacing, uh, one foot maximum spacing and two foot maximum spacing for grid one and two respectively. And then also I put in uh, the typical one inch square mullions for the frame for the border one and border two for both grids one and grid two. Um, so that's a quick review of what the previous video is. This video is to explain how did I actually make each one of those barrel tile curtain uh, panels and then apply it to this kind of situation. So I'm going to go ahead and close the file. And the reason I'm choosing 2020 and not the current version 2022 is because uh, there may be people out there who want this file. So if I were to make it in Revit 2022, I know a lot of people don't have 2022 still. Um, and so the older version that I make it in, the easier it is for people to, to use. All right, so we're going to go ahead and make a custom curtain panel. So you're going to head over to the uh, where it says New Under Families, and your window will pop up. You'll want to go ahead and scroll down and look for uh, Curtain Wall Panel. Okay, <clears throat> we're not doing anything super fancy. Um, so I'm going to click Open. And here you can see you have an exterior side and interior side and you have reference planes that define the left, the right, the center, and then the horizontal center. If we go to the exterior elevation, you can see that you also have a reference plane at the top to define the top of the curtain panel that agrees with the grid one and grid two spacing system. You have a reference level as well, and you have a reference plane at the bottom. So if you need to, you can select and you'll see they have different names like top. This one doesn't have one, so I'm just gonna call it bottom. the ease and then I'm gonna head back over to reference level and you'll see this one is left this one is right this is center left right and this is front okay so for us to create a barrel tile uh, curtain panel what we really need to do initially is just kind of make it the size we want so I'm gonna pull these in okay because I don't need it super wide of a panel and uh, we're going to go ahead and change the scale so it's a little easier to work with. And then I'm going to create a dimension that defines just the initial width here so I can see how wide this is. And based upon the uh, sloped glazing that you saw earlier of one foot and two foot, then uh, we're going to make this, uh, well, just so um, we'll just pull this out just for a second. And that's good enough for now. I'm not super critical about that because we're going to adjust that in the design. Uh, what we do need to do is head over to the top so we can see the top reference plane and pull it down to about two, uh, two feet just to kind of get it a, a sense of the overall initial barrel tile shape. Now, if we look at the barrel tile shape in another way, I'm going to open up another file for you real quick just so you can get an idea. Um, same application, but in a curtain wall system, not in a slope glazing. And if we tab into the actual tile panel, um, we can unlock it. We can actually edit the family. And in this family, you'll see it's nothing more than a blend of two arcs, um, two profiles that are drawn low and high. Okay, so that's what we're going to literally be drawing. So I'm going to go ahead and close this file, close this file. And then we'll start at the... Um, the bottom here. So we're going to use the bottom reference plane. So I'll go to reference level and I'm going to head over to the create tab of the ribbon and we're creating a blend 
So a blend in Revit is a Boolean operation that requires two profiles, a low profile and a high profile, preferably of different shapes, and it's going to be extruded and blended in a vertical fashion, linear fashion, from one profile to the next. So I'm going to start the blend command, and it's going to assume that I'm creating the base. This is why it says edit top. If I click edit top, it's going to assume that I'm creating the top profile. So for now, I'm going to create the bottom one. I'm not too concerned about the size of the arc of the base of the barrel as well. Um, this is just for quick sketching. You can go in and be super accurate if you really want to. Like, for example, if I start something like this, and then I use my pick line method, and we'll do an offset, uh, let's say, of a quarter inch. Um, and so that's pretty thin of, a, of an example of a barrel tile. So I'm going to decide to change this and make it uh, let's do one inch, just for the sake of visually impactful. Uh, I'm not too concerned about the actual thickness of the um, barrel tile, but you can make it that thickness if you need to as well, okay? And then um, we'll need to finish the sketch. So I'll use pick line and I'll use locking so I can create this. And then I'll do it again over here. That warning is just to let you know that I drew it on top of this line, but I cleaned it up anyway. So if we um, take a look at this in elevation view, exterior elevation view, you can see that that sketch that I'm making for the first profile is down here. Now, to make the second profile, the upper one, what we'll do is we'll click Edit Top. And then we have to set the current plane to be the one that we want. So the plane that we want is the top plane because we're going to be drawing it at the top. Okay, so we're also going to do another arc, but this time we're going to make it smaller. So I'm going to start, say, from here to here and go to here. Then I'm going to use my pick line command, do the one inch again. And then I'll use the pick line method with the lock. Clean this up. Okay, and then do it again for this other side. And don't worry, that warning always pops up when you're creating content. Now, um, if you notice very carefully as I zoom in and out, my um, intersections look a little strange. Uh, I'm going to assume that that has to do with my graphics card display. Uh, I am working with a new laptop with a new card, the RTX 3080 card, which is a good card. And it is sanctioned to run Revit, but I get weird anomalies like this. Um, even if I switch to, say, shaded, or switch to a fine level of detail. I can kind of see what's going on. But in any event, let's head over to the exterior side and now you can see that profile is being created here. If we switch over to the 3D view, you can see what's happening. I've created one profile down here and another profile here. It's going to blend it vertically up. All I need to do is finish the sketch and it creates it. Now, heading over to the exterior elevation, we can see that it's created. I'm gonna shade it by typing in SD and we need to align and lock the top and the bottom. So we're going to go ahead and pull this down and that lock it there. And then at the bottom down here, we're going to pull it out and pull it back in. And we're going to lock it. That way, the top and the bottom of this barrel is actually controlled by these reference planes. These reference planes are controlled by the grid 1 and grid 2 spacing. Okay, so this reference plane, this reference plane, this one and this one are all controlled by grid one and grid two spacing. Now that we have it created, you can see what it looks like. If you need to set a material to it, you can just select it. And over here under the instance properties under material, you can go ahead and click this button to associate it to a family parameter. We'll click this new button and we're going to call it um, barrel tile material, just something simple. And then all we have to do now is head over to our family types window and put in the material that we want it to be. So here, the material lab box opens up. It's kind of big for me, so I'm going to shrink it down a little bit. And we're going to pick something. Now let's just type in um, clay, because, you know, tiles sometimes are made of roofing tile. Let's try that one. I'm not sure how that's going to look, but let's just try that anyway. Um, so now that we've applied it, that material, 
and we head over to a realistic display, this is what it's going to look like. So that's not what I wanted. I wanted more like a like a clay like you would see in pottery. So we're going to go ahead and change that up a little bit. Uh, let's go back to this and let's go back to say it is maybe a type of stone. So let's just search for stone and we can see there's a lot of different types of stones to work with. We'll start with stone and we'll scroll. How about limestone? Let's try limestone instead. Uh, I still don't like limestone. <laughs> so this is part of the fun of picking a material that you want that makes sense. Um, let's go into AEC materials. Let's look at ceramic as in porcelain ceramic. Hmm. Look at the appearance. We'll look at, see what it looks like. We'll try that. That's fine. That's good enough. All right. So now that we have the actual um, curtain panel custom one created, we need to save it. So I'm going to head over here, file, save as a family. I'm going to go ahead and put it under my temp folder location. And I'm going to call it uh, barrel tile custom A. Done. So now that we have it created, um, I'm going to type in C. Uh, I created a keyboard shortcut for close all inactive views uh, windows by typing in CI. So it just makes life a little faster and easier for me. Now that we have the tile, we need to load it into a project. So we're going to go ahead and make sure we can start a new project based upon an architectural template file. We'll use Control Tab to swap back. And then we can just click Load into the project. So now that it's loaded, how do I use it? Um, if we're using in a standard curtain wall situation or in a slope glazing roof situation, we have to create that content first. So I'm going to head over to the wall command. Head over to the type selector, scroll down. We're going to pick the storefront one for now. I'm just going to draw a piece like this. And then we're going to head over to um, elevation view. We're going to head over to level two. We're just going to call it roof because we're making a roof. So I'm going to head over to the roof plan. And then I'm going to create a simple roof. Play like that. And we won't slope these two. And then we'll switch it to the slope glazing and finish it. Um, obviously, our view range is off because you know we haven't set that correctly. So let's change this. We look at this in 3D. This is what we have so far. We have not done any kind of swapping whatsoever. So let's work off of this sloped roof, uh, slope glazing here. We're going to select it, go to the type properties. We're going to set up our spacing that we want. I'm going to say max spacing one and then max spacing two. And then over here under the curtain panel, we're going to go in here and choose the one that we picked. Barrel. And then again, the grid for the border. For the sake of simplicity, I'm just doing a one inch square. Um, you can do whatever you want. You can actually make your own custom mullion profile. And once you load it into this particular project, you can pull it from the drop down list. So now that I click apply and OK, this is what I get. So it's very easy from that standpoint to make the barrel tiles. Okay. Uh, if you want to get super fancy, you know, you can look at how you model it so it's overlapping the tile. Right now it's perfectly aligned edge to edge. So if you wanted to overlap, you would model the extrusion, the, the blend extrusion, such that it goes past those planes and it overlaps a little bit. From the storefront one situation, this is the typical storefront that Revit gives you. I would go ahead and leave it alone. I would just duplicate it and call it whatever I want so that I can not mess up the original. And then from here, all I need to do is switch out the panel that I want. And then again, specify the spacing that I want. Like so. And then as for the mullions and whatnot, I'm going to say none and none, and none. Just so we can see what it looks like without having to deal with any horizontal or vertical mullions. You can get really fancy, by the way, with this system, too. Um, OK. And so you have to look at it and see what's going on and how it gets built. Oh, I forgot. We've got some border stuff going on, too. Um, 
we're gonna say join condition not defined automatically embed one two none 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 and then uh, for the sake of ease I'm gonna tab into one of them right click select all the millions on the host we're gonna unpin them and we're just gonna delete them so we're just left with a quote-unquote uh, barrel tile wall okay so this was a video to help you understand how to go step by step to make to make each one of these barrels and then how to apply it so what we will do now is I'm going to head back over to this tile and just for the sake of double checking I want to see if I can make this work with some overlapping um, here's the thing with the overlapping because for a certain amount uh, of controllability the top and the bottoms have to be constrained to these planes so that way they um, uh, so they agree with the spacing in grid one and grid two okay so we have to model an extra piece somehow and make it so that it, it still holds that relationship because let's say I pull this out I break that relationship I pull this out I break that relationship then I just purposely uh, let's say I do a reference plane here I can do a reference plane over here as well I can specify the dimension of the reference planes like this and specify that overlap so if I select this and parameterize it and just call it overlap then I can take this one and also call it the overlap with that being said whatever that overlap size is going to be let's say two inch overlap then the reference planes should move so if they are moving like that we now can take this edge top edge and align it to the top one and not the bottom one okay this will work too because these top edges of the geometry are aligned a lot to these planes which are controlled by these uh, parameters which is also controlled and associated to the main grid line parameters so now that we've done this I'm gonna save the file load it back into the project and we're gonna overwrite everything that we have and we're gonna look at it again so well now if we look carefully does it give us the overlap that we need see so this is where you have to kind of experiment and, and play with um, so there is overlapping as you can see because if I select that I can see underneath I can also switch this over to wireframe and now you can see that you've got some overlapping just be careful with how you're looking at it from a 3d perspective so there is overlapping here there is overlapping here um, and again like I said if you get really fancy with modeling your um, tile then it'll look nicer I've seen some pretty interesting looking Spanish tile um, blends and or sweeps um, to make it look more realistic but this is just kind of raw down and dirty all right Hopefully you enjoyed the video and hopefully it made sense. As always, if you need the file or you need questions or answered or you need help, just contact me and I'll do my best to help you. Okay, thank you.